Now the climate system responds to the increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. There will be all types of impacts. Some of them will be very gradual or linear, as we call it. But some of them will behave in a very wild, in a very unpredictable way. What I'm going to tell you now is precisely about the non-linearities and also the interactions of effects, what we call cascading impacts. This is a very beautiful picture of a very dangerous phenomenon called a hurricane. And this is a very non-linear phenomenon. No? And it just struck in November 2013 in the Philippines, such an extreme event with wind speeds more than 300 kilometers per hour can just wipe out huge parts of human civilization. Now, non-linearities in response to climate change will also happen at a larger scale, both in spatial terms and temporal terms. The idea is you have certain vital organs of the planetary machinery, like the rainforest in Amazonia, the Indian summer monsoon, the Greenland ice sheet. All these parts of the planetary machinery Will they remain unaffected by global warming? Or may it be that some of these vital organs of the planetary makeup will be changed, maybe even destroyed? Now let me start with something which is easy to grasp. If the planet warms, it will happen in a very disproportional way. The Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. And so we see the retreat on this chart of the summer sea ice in the Arctic. And you see that in 2012, the sea ice was retreating extremely heavily. And so there is clearly a tendency that in certain summer months, there will be no sea ice at all, actually, in the future. Talking about ice, nearby is the Greenland ice sheet, 2,000 meters thick sometimes in certain parts. From satellite data on 12th of July 2012, one could infer 97% of the surface were melting. What will be the future of the Greenland ice sheet? There will be irreversible loss of the Greenland ice sheet starting if there is a temperature rise of about 0.6 degrees centigrade. And if it would be just 2 degrees warming, it would persist for many thousand years. But if it would be 8 degrees warming, it could melt down in just one or two millennia. Now, if people think, well, what happens in two millennia, I don't mind. This is not a problem for me and not for my descendants. There is another nonlinear effect for global warming, which is on the horizon already, the coral reefs. If you have a global mean temperature increase of just two degrees, within the next four or five decades, the vast majority of the coral reefs would die back because of increased surface temperature, because of sea level rise, and also because of acidification of the ocean, which is a direct effect of CO2 enrichment in the atmosphere. In order to save just 10% of them, we would have to confine global warming to just 1.5 degrees. The dieback of corals has to do with uh, episodical warming, which comes very often with a so-called El Nino event. And these El Nino events had devastating effects. Now, the big question is what will happen to El Nino in the future? Will it become stronger? Will it become more regular? Will it go away? We don't know yet. I mentioned the Amazon rainforest. There have been two unprecedented droughts in Amazonia over just the last decade, actually, in 2005 and 2010. And from satellite measurements, the damages are not being repaired so if you would have many droughts like that in the future, and some models point to that, the Amazon rainforest may be transformed into a savanna. Another issue, a so-called tipping element in the Earth system, the so-called jet stream. The jet stream is a stream of air in the upper troposphere, 10 to 12 kilometers high. It goes from west to east, and in general it's a straight ribbon. But sometimes it develops bulges or bellies to the south or the north, and they go away after two or three days. The jet stream is actually driven by the temperature difference between the Arctic air masses and the temperate air masses. Now, since the Arctic is warming 
faster than the rest uh, of the northern hemisphere, this temperature difference becomes smaller, and if the jet stream is driven by the difference, it becomes less straight, so to speak. Yeah? Okay. So and that happened actually in 2010. The jet stream had a northward bulge over Russia, and on the back of that southward bulge over Pakistan. And there was a major drought in Russia, and there was a major flood in Pakistan. And we have now had a similar situation in Germany in 2013, so in Central Europe, major floods. And you see here in red, you have the winds going southward. Then in blue, you have the winds going northward. And uh, you see that in July 1980, we have almost no pattern. In May 2013, when we had these major floods in Europe, you have almost a lattice of Rossby waves, which stayed for four weeks or so. Finally, there may be interactions between tipping elements. So if the Greenland ice sheet melts, this has a major impact on, say, the thermal line circulation on the Gulf Stream, which again may have an impact on the Arctic sea ice and so on. And you also will have cascades of tipping points or tipping elements. If a certain part of the system is tipped into a new state, it may sort of push bigger elements in the planetary machinery also into a new state, so like a domino effect. One example is the subpolar gyre, a big current off the coast south Greenland, actually. And it may affect the overall current system in the North Atlantic. There are sleeping giants in the system, that is the frozen methane on the ocean shelves, and also what is in the permafrost regions. Eh? And methane is 23 times as powerful as a greenhouse gas as CO2 is. So if that gets released, it could be a major threat and you could have all types of feedback effects. Now, what happens in the natural system Non-linearities, cascading effects and so on can also happen in the social system. So, for example, if you have a heat wave and that reduces crop yield in North America, which is a major food provider in the world, this may increase food prices in, say, India. If you have at the same time a big flood through changes in the monsoon, this may actually create food riots. And we should do just about everything to avoid that situation on this planet.